Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. I am Hina Gampir. If you are in Verli in Mumbai and you have to go to Kolaba and there's no traffic, then you will take around 30 minutes in your car or in any of the vehicles that you're traveling in. But if there is traffic, then on average, you will take around 48 minutes to reach from Verli to Kolaba. The distance between these two uh, locations is about 12 kilometers. And if you are at Brigade Road in Bengaluru and you want to go to Kor Mangala and there's no traffic, you will take about 30 minutes in your vehicle. But if there is traffic, then on average, you will spend about 43 minutes on the road. And distance in Bengaluru of the two specific locations that we picked up for you is is just 5.7 kilometers. Now understand, there are these two cities in the country where we picked up two locations where on Google usually the distance is about, uh, the time uh, taken is about 30 odd minutes and two locations we picked up from Mumbai, two from Bengaluru. The distance between uh, both is different. In Mumbai, the distance between both these locations is about 12 kilometers. However, in Bengaluru, it was about 5.7 kilometers. But the time taken was safe. Now this, viewers, is the congestion level in our metro cities. If there was better planning, we could have reached our destinations faster. And that's our focus on urban debate tonight on Mirror Now. What can we do to decongest our cities? Is there scope to reduce traffic? But before that, let's tell you why we have chosen to mention specifically Mumbai and Bengaluru as examples for you. Well, TomTom, Tom, which is a geolocation technology specialist, has come out with TomTom Tom Traffic Index. Now, this report has traffic trends that are seen in 404 cities in 58 countries across the world in 2021. A year, remember, where many across the world had to stay inside their homes due to COVID pandemic, due to restrictions and lockdown. Now, according to this report, Istanbul is world's most congested city, followed by Moscow at number two. However, India's financial capital is at number five. You heard me right. Mumbai, viewers, is world's fifth most congested city as per this particular survey. Bengaluru is 10th most congested city in the world among the 404 cities that this index is talking about. Delhi is not far behind. The national capital is the 11th most congested city and Pune is at number 21 out of 404 cities. Now, India's four cities viewers are among 25 most congested in the entire world. So let's try and find out why it is a cause of concern and what can we really do now to decongest our cities. Joining us on the broadcast this evening on this particular issue is Dilip Cherin, who is an image guru. We have with us R.K. Mishra, non-resident scholar uh, of uh, Carnage India, Chandrasekhar Prabhu, urban planner joining us on the broadcast, Shailesh Sinha, CEO Traffic People Foundation, also live with us this evening. And joining us is Andy Merchant, uh, who is uh, strategic manager, product marketing, TomTom. Tom. Good evening. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. Let me begin the discussion with you, uh, Andy Merchant, since it is TomTom's Tom survey that we are talking about, which says that at least four cities in India, including Mumbai, Bengaluru, Pune and Delhi are among the uh, worst uh, or you can say most decongested cities, top 25 decongested cities in the world. Can you tell us a little bit about what this really means? What is congestion level that you are referring to uh, in uh, your report? What do you mean when you say that these are the most congested cities? Yeah, hi. Thanks for thanks for having me. Um, so first of all, yes, TomTom yesterday launched its uh, 11th annual traffic index. So this one looks at the traffic patterns across 2021, uh, which obviously have been really different in the past couple of years. So as you said earlier, we measured uh, 404 cities uh, in 58 countries, and we look at the we look at the impact of traffic uh, in those cities. Um, in Europe, we also measured congestion uh, versus uh, emissions for the first time as well. Um, but essentially what it means is we look at the journeys driven throughout 2021 and we look at what would happen if there was no traffic. What is the free flow speed on those roads? And we calculate what the impact of traffic is on people's journeys. 
Um, if you look at the cities, the four cities in India, um, the average um, the average congestion is around 48%, which means that for a 30 minute journey, it's going to take you on average 45 minutes to complete that journey. Okay, so you're actually spending 15 minutes extra on the road. Dilip Cherian, uh, what is your first reaction to this data that has emerged? Like I gave two examples in the beginning about Mumbai and Bengaluru. Now the distance between yeah. the destinations in both these cities that I picked up was different, but the time taken was same. And if you're in Mumbai, you're actually spending about 15 minutes extra to reach your destination just because the planning was not done properly. There's traffic. You know, thank you, Ina. Um, I think that since we're talking about urban debate and urban sprawl and traffic congestion, um, let's first get rid of the elephant in the room, which is a former chief minister of a state who said that traffic congestion actually leads to higher divorce rates. But that, I guess, was just one of the throwaway remarks. But what is actually happening is that these are three cities that I know of, uh, Delhi, Mumbai, and Bangalore, where I have to travel incessantly on work. It is impossible. And what has happened is that in the last 10 years, the level of congestion has more than tripled, more than tripled. So you have situations in these cities where at peak times, and at most times is peak times, you know, you have about two and a half hours of peak time in the morning and about close to three hours of peak time in the evening. So you're talking of tra traffic crawl rather than traffic movement. And I think Tom Tom has picked that up. And what is happening is that you are, you are actually spending both very high levels of emission and very high levels of time stuck in traffic. And this is as a result of two things. One, very large numbers of people on the roads in individual transportation, which is a failure of mass transportation. And the second, the traffic planning and the traffic movement hasn't been planned in an adequate way to make sure that these small points are minimized and you don't have people just whiling away their hours on the street, just trying to get from point A to point B. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, Bangalore is now recognized as a, a colossal traffic jam and nothing more than that. And it's shocking for a, for a city which is expected to be the country's uh, technology hub. So uh, things are not much better in the capital or in the financial hub. And I think it's getting worse in many more cities. So because of the large numbers of private vehicles on the road, because of the low adoption of mass transportation, and because of poor traffic planning, we are talking of huge urban waste and uh, all the problems that follow from it. Right. Uh, but let me just clarify once, uh, uh, Dilip Cherian, you know, the debate today is actually to decongest cities, not because of the reason, in fact, that was uh, uh, given earlier uh, that you were referring to. <laughs> it is to make our lives better. Uh, that's the reason why we are having this debate tonight. But uh, R.K. Mishra, uh, what is your point of view really on this entire issue? Because it's serious. If, for example, we are spending so much time on the road, it means, you know, something somewhere is not right and you know it can be fixed that's what this uh, report is now telling us of course we know that the fact is that there is traffic congestion uh, we also know what it causes it causes the problems in economic development uh, bangalore loses four billion dollar only in the it sector from the traffic congestion per year it also causes health issues productivity loss and of course, the global warming, all put together. So we understand that traffic congestion is a problem and what it affects and how it affects, how to fix it. I think primarily we have to think a little bit different. First of all, these cities need to have a very extensive network of public transport. So in India, actually, thanks to this government and previous governments, a big focus on mass rapid transit system, which is Metro has happened. So Delhi has around 400 kilometer of uh, metro with 365 stations. It's the most dense metro network uh, 
uh, in the country and also is one of the very good networks in Asia. But still, Delhi Metro is ineffective because Delhi Metro, you cannot reach. The, all these public transports will work only with first and last mile connectivity is provided. If you are from your home to reach the metro, you will be on average in Delhi anywhere between two to three kilometers. Where in Tokyo, it will be around 600 meters. In Hong Kong, it will be around 300 meters, 200 meters, which people can easily walk. In Delhi, which is the most dense network because our cities are, are urban sprawl, it takes two to four kilometers to reach the metro station. And there is no public option or private option available. So if you have to take your scooter or your car to the metro station, why not go all the way? That's why it's happening. So Delhi metro ridership is 9,000 per week hour, whereas uh, Tokyo is 22,000, Hong Kong is 19,000, Shanghai is around 16,000. Delhi metro is losing money because not enough people are using Delhi metro. Okay. So this is the biggest challenge, and I've been working with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, that we need to create first and last mile connectivity, and which is can be done only by the private sector. Government will provide the public transport in terms of the mass rapid transit system like metro. Bangalore is having metro, it's still very small network. Mumbai has been having a very, for very long local trains. Now you are getting almost 10 odd metro lines. But government is failing to understand that creating metro is not enough. You have to connect the metro from your home and from the office, and which will be done in private sector. So they should promote hmm. public bike sharing. Correct? The companies uh, which are like Yulu and all are doing it. More and more, every metro station must be mandated to create three kilometer around the metro station of footpaths, because people can easily walk in city like Bangalore, weather is so good, you can walk easily one or two kilometers. But metro will make the station, will not create the footpath. Mm -hmm. And the local municipal corporation, of course, doesn't care footpath because they allow encroachment of That's footpath. a very interesting point that you're raising, that, you know, only by bringing metro lines, metro trains is not sufficient. We need last mile connectivity as well. And the data that you are giving us is quite interesting. That people in Delhi, where we have a uh, interesting and a comprehensive metro network, uh, not many people seem to be using it maybe to its full potential because of these reasons that you mentioned. We'll talk about solutions a little later. Uh, let me also go across to Shailesh Sinha, CEO Traffic People Foundation, who's live with us this evening. Uh, Shailesh Sinha, how will you like to react to this data that has come out in this particular report by TomTom, Tom, and how uh, uh, you know concerned are you given the current circumstances? See, uh, I heard all the experts, and uh, my opinion here is that uh, number one, that we need to understand the psyche of um, Indians. Number one, and which is uh, that that we are an aspirational country, and the kind of vehicles coming into the market as new models, be it two-wheeler, be it four-wheeler, be it, you know, so many things around it. And uh, as, as I said, instant gratification and so many things around, you know, our, our buying habits of a vehicle and things like that. So we are actually pushing ourselves away from using public transport, which actually has to be in our culture. We need to just develop all these, you know, characters in our our our, uh, our system that we, we should be more towards uh, the way he mentioned Hong Kong. Tokyo and so many other countries. Why why those pe uh, countries are not so congested when it comes to traffic? Because they are too much into public transport. They respect certain things. So we need to work all around the things that public transport is one good thing and that also is a kind of to a, a, a national service. I mean, we need to understand that only cricket matches and only wars doesn't make us Indians, right? Everything, every aspect, every act of ours needs to be considered when it comes to our serving the nation. That also includes using public transport. I've always been pushing that. And second part, what I uh, 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 mentioned as a first part is the kind of uh, vehicles, the launches which are coming, which makes us aspirational. Why uh, all the new model mobile phones are uh, selling so fast? Because we need those kind of uh, pleasures. So we, as a country, are developing countries, Bangalore, Pune, Mumbai and uh, Delhi, we are aspirational people. So we just need to uh, correct all those things also. And government also needs to check that there has to be certain ceiling. I have always been saying on TV debates, there has all, they, they should always be some ceiling on production of vehicles. So that they, uh, and, and also number two, the mm. finance of vehicles. So these two things needs to be checked by the government part. That the ceiling has to be there. You know, if I want five cars, mm. if my ITR is allowing me, I can mm. go and buy it. Why? We need to see all these aspects. 
there has to be a certain level in terms of production of the vehicles hmm. and there has to be a certain ceiling it's a very the, interesting point that, Sharif, that, only, that you've raised you know, that you know people don't want to use to public transport even if it's there maybe people don't want to use public transport and that is also the reason why we are seeing this kind of congestion in metro cities across the yep. country uh, Chandrasekhar Prabhu uh, what is your assessment of the details that have emerged and in your opinion what are the problems uh, that you know we need to immediately address no different cities have got different problems and it's very difficult i have uh, personally been involved in studies of urban centers about about 200 urban centers all over the world and it's very difficult it's it's like uh, you know comparing apples and oranges for instance now bangalore can grow 360 degrees all around and it can spread one ring road two ring road three ring roads four ring road so can delhi mumbai is 425 square kilometers surrounded by sea on all the side cannot expand on all the side if you take the center point of uh, delhi at connaught place or wherever and uh, you take a uh, you know take that as central point and draw a radius then 20 mile ra 20 kilometer radius 30 kilometer radius 40 kilometer radius you can go on expanding on all sides in mumbai if you take southern mumbai as a central point and draw a circle you will find that only 15 degrees uh, is uh, available for increase and it's like a triangle with the southern part of Mumbai at the end where the sea is on either side and the strip is just one kilometer wide with sea on both sides. And then the eastern suburbs and western suburbs, two other sides of the triangle. And the only way you can grow is north-south. Another thing which needs to be considered is hmm. Mumbai has a public transportation system which is the railways where where you have a local train which carries 7 million people every day. And so the congestion is not for them because local trains move at the rate of 1.2, uh, 1 minute, 2 seconds per train and 70 million people travel, though not very comfortably because the trains are crowded. But at least the system of transportation is uh, there. So the people who use the vehicles, about whom he is saying that going by road, uh, half an hour will take 45 minutes. But 85% of the commuters don't use the road. Please understand. They use the public transportation hmm. system already. So you cannot compare the traffic of Mumbai with, say, the traffic of Tokyo or the traffic of Istanbul, because every city is planned differently, has its own logistical problems. So there needs to be some kind of understanding of the city's transportation issue. Do you know that in Mumbai, despite, despite okay. having a million vehicles, you the average occupancy of a vehicle is just 1.12. That means out of a population of 1.2 hmm. crores, just about 12 lakh of people use vehicles. So uh, whose congestion you are talking hmm. about? You're talking about congestion of people like okay, me. Okay, let's get a response from Andy Merchant and from TomTom. Tom. Andy, is there a common thread? Is there the a common, common thread that connects all these cities that you've surveyed, the 404 cities? On the basis of which you are saying, you know, that on this particular parameter, uh, Mumbai yeah, is at number common, five, the, Bengaluru is at the, number 10, and you're comparing it with talk, Tokyo and others. Let Andy respond, the, sir. Yes. The, the common thread is very simple. You can, you have so, to compare... So I'll come to you in just a bit. You I have think, to um, compare... Right. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, I, sir, I, I'll I, just come to you in a bit. Yeah, Andy yeah, Merchant you, responding. You have, you have I think uh, I think it's a really valid point. I think um, you know I think every every city in the index is very very you know it's cities that have high public transport, cities that have low public transport, you know cities that have high um, use of bicycles and two wheeled vehicles, etc. And we definitely see a trend 
in regions. Um, so in the US, for example, there are much more uh, heavy users of cars and much less of public transport, with, with, with the exception of certain cities. Um, certainly in the Asia Pacific region, uh, we see a lot more two wheeled vehicles than, than we would do in say some European cities. So I think it's fair to say that the makeup of the city has a, has a big impact. Um, the habits of the people that live there. I, I heard earlier, you know, Hong Kong and Tokyo. And I think if, if, if the habit of the, if the commuter is that they use public transport versus a car or the other way around, it, it's, um, it's often really difficult to shift people's habits. And, and one of the things that we really saw in the last two years um, with lockdowns happening around the world because of, because of COVID is that people did stop driving very, very quickly because they were forced to. Right? They, they couldn't travel to a workplace, um, the shops were closed, etc. So suddenly cars disappeared off the road. And it was really evident that that happened. Um, when lockdowns, um, when countries came out of lockdown and reopened, we saw really sharp upturns in traffic. So again, people went back to what they were used to, uh, back to what they're comfortable with, uh, and kind of fell back into a habit again. Interesting though, what we have seen in many countries um, is that we've seen a shift in the in the um, in the traffic patterns of rush hours? Um, so the, the typical rush hours, morning and evening, uh, used to be really big peaks in the day. And, and what we've seen through the last year and two years is that those peaks have flattened a little bit, especially in the morning time. Uh, and I think that's the the flexible working patterns that people right. have adopted. Um, in the evening time, however, um, the, the, the peak hasn't tailed off just as much. And, and we put that down to um, the rise in e-commerce, food delivery especially. Uh, many, many companies have, have, have set up in different cities yes. in the last couple of years, making local deliveries from e-commerce and you know, making deliveries from local restaurants. And we attribute that some way towards the fact that the evening rush hour hasn't tailed off the same way that the, the morning peaks have. Okay, that's a very interesting finding. And Dilip Cherin, I think two points uh, are important that we have got in the debate so far. One is that definitely there is a need for better planning. Second, the habits of people, uh, how they commute, uh, you know, are also responsible for this congestion that we are seeing. For example, the stats that Mr. Chandrasekhar Prabhu gave us. Your opinion? You know, I think that uh, I'd like to take the second question first. Um, as Mr. Mishra has mentioned, it is actually possible to change habits. You need to build in the infrastructure to make that change possible. In fact, I think 2022 is a, is a fundamentally important year when people are going to play this work from home hybrid with working in office. If we can begin to make the change for people by providing them last mile connectivity and encourage uh, public use of public transport, tax the use of private transport at a higher level, um, you will actually begin to trigger the kind of habit changes which will be of long lasting benefit to certainly cities like Bangalore and Delhi. As was mentioned, Bombay has a very healthy commuter habit, and vast numbers of people use that. That's the most important thing. The first question of yours, which is to do with better planning. Yes, better planning would make sure, for example, you could mandate that certain city hubs should have an altered office timing, because that will change the, the traffic pattern in a city and remove certain blockage points. For example, think if, for example, Nehru Place in Delhi or uh, the Bandra Kurla complex in Mumbai could have a separate timing. Say that offices have to open by 8 o'clock and close by 4 o'clock, for example. It would change the traffic patterns enormously for the better. So I think that this is a good time for urban planners and for city governments to step in and begin to make those changes as people try and work out the logistics of a modified way of working, which I think we are at the edge of. 
Now, going by uh, what Andy told us that, you know, during the pandemic year, when people were forced to stay indoors, they stayed indoors. And maybe that time we saw congestion level also going down. Uh, but then after the restrictions were lifted, cars were back on the roads, all the vehicles were back on the roads the way they used to be before uh, the pandemic. So do you think, Mr. Cherian, uh, you know, a policy is needed? Because habits, of course, are not going to be, uh, you know, changed uh, overnight. They'll take time. Uh, do you think a policy in this regard is also needed apart from the other solution that you mentioned that a hybrid work culture is something that the companies can also consider as a social responsibility to begin with? I'm a great believer that habits can be changed closest to the local levels. Let's not have a national policy for this. This should be city-specific, city administration, you know, maybe the South Delhi Municipal Corporation, the North Mumbai Municipal Corporation needs to consider how to decongest that part of the city and suggest to companies in that zone what needs to be done. Because if you actually try and you know push this down from you know 35,000 feet, you know, you actually make mistakes. It needs to be done closer to where the traffic is, but it needs to be done at enough of a remove where it cannot be influenced by, say, uh, you know, shopkeepers or maybe restaurant owners or something. I think people's habits can be changed if we can mandate certain things, give incentives and also disincentives. If that actually works together, I think you're talking of a new urban center or a new urban center of gravity. And I think that's very important. Thank you. Interesting. Uh, R.K. Mishra, uh, do you agree with these suggestions uh, that have been given by uh, Mr. Cherian? And, you know, uh, it seems that uh, if we uh, begin to consider this as a problem, then definitely uh, something can be done to decongest our cities. I think I fully agree with Mr. Cherian. I think it's a very, uh, I think, out-of-the-box idea. Uh, for example, in Bangalore, for example, where I live, uh, Outer Ring Road can have a different time working zone. In fact, half of Outer Ring Road can have one time zone. But let me get to a much uh, broader question. In fact, uh, I have been a, a corporate person. I still have uh, invested in at least 30 odd companies and I sit on several boards. We never believed that work from home will ever be possible. We thought it is a fancy concept. But thanks to COVID, one positive outcome of this is that not only we believe that it can be done, actually we are encouraging that. Now, you would have heard there is a company called Misho. Several other uh, startups are telling work from home forever. Now, why do you think Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, and you know what? Only four cities in this country are the net job creators. Only four, by the way. Why not 40? Why not 100? And these four cities are NCR, Bangalore, Pune, and Hyderabad. In fact, Mumbai is a net job loser. Now, only these four cities, why everybody is coming there? Because that's where the new economy is. Now, this new economy is also the service economy which can be served from many other places. Of course, delivery cannot be done from a different city. A lot of people in the companies where 30 to 40 percent are working from their hometowns and Lucknow's and Rachi's and Nagpur's and Bhuneshwar's. Now, these companies, what they're doing is they're creating a 500, 300, 400 people centers in there. Instead of getting 5,000 people on Outer Ring Road in Bangalore or BKC in Mumbai or, you know, Gurgaon, they are saying, okay, you work from there. Once a quarter, we'll all meet to ensure the company culture is there. Now, it does two, three things. First, these people are saving a lot of money because they're staying in their hometowns, near their hometowns, in a low-cost places. Also, it provides job opportunities to them in their right. area. The ecosystem will develop. Now, if you don't do this, India will be a country of four cities. Okay. India needs to be a country of 400 cities. And you cannot force people. COVID has forced them, and let's make use hmm. of it. And I think, thanks to the geos and ATLs of the world, India, despite having all other issues, India is still has a very good broadband connection and which has made it possible. And I think this is something we need to, that going back to business as usual, widen the road, create more, is not going to solve it. Create 400 cities in India with provide employment rather than four cities in India. Hmm.
Okay, uh, that's a very important point you've made. And I'll go across to uh, Shailesh Sinha once again, who in fact first raised the issue of how people, uh, not many people in fact, want to use public transport. And that's the reason we see more vehicles on the roads. Do you think the suggestions that Mr. Dilip Cheran gave, what Mr. Mishra spoke about, is something that can be implemented? Because as Mr. Chandrasekhar Prabhu was also mentioning, you know, these cities are different. They have different problems. And hence, you know, it can't be uh, one blanket solution for all of them. Absolutely. They can't be a common thread as, as mentioned earlier in the show. See, my point is very uh, straight and simple. The point which he, I mean, raised by the expert just before me is that there has to be more employment avenues because only four cities, we can have 400 cities, absolutely. But And second part is that the municipal corporations and PWDs and these, you know, uh, road departments and even the ministerial department, they, has to come, they have to come on a common platform and understand that, you know, the, the people who are all coming into the cities and, you know, congesting, it's, it's just like, you know, uh, the way we are talking about population uh, blast, it is again, it's population of cars blasting on the road. It's, it's, it's like that. I mean, we need to con I mean, contain all these things in a very beautiful way. And that can only happen when all the authorities, as mentioned by all the experts, can, you know, come on a common platform. And Mumbai can't, you know, as, as, as uh, mentioned, as a triangle city, uh, they, they can't be uh, more roads. But yes, they can be more infra development. Infra development should on, not only be focusing on interstate connectivity, it should actually be connecting more of underpasses, uh, flyovers, and clover leaves, and so many things can be worked around it, right? And uh, as an employment base, we need to spread our base to various other cities apart from only Bangalore, Pune, Mumbai, Delhi, and other, other, other things. And the first and foremost, what I've always been endorsing and saying, that India doesn't need to change habit. We need to develop a culture towards public transport. And these cities, they actually are getting beautiful public transport system, be it uh, uh, BRTs, be it, you know, metro services, be it, you know, public transport services. And yes, first mile and last mile connectivity has to be very important aspect. As mentioned that uh, certain cities in the world, they only has to walk, the people only has to walk about 600 meters, 400 meters. No, it's not possible in India because they, there is a, you know, a straight line and the city is spread 5, 10 kilometers left, 5, 10 kilometers right. So, you know, 400, 600 meters can't be the um, solution. The solution can only be that we need to see that there has to be first mile connectivity. We need to encourage people that you don't have to feel and experience inconvenience. You have a first mile connectivity and the moment you get down from public hmm. transport, you have last mile connectivity. And absolutely, this hybrid working system is all, hmm. also adding on to the beautiful aspect jaha, uh, where, where commuting is less. You know, so many things are happening in positive way. Yes, but we need to develop Indianness. We need to uh, develop a, a social responsibility towards our own city, state. And we need to use more and more of public transport. And this can only be brought more into picture when people as himself or herself, go ahead and use and say that, yes, I'm, uh, you know, uh, this is my national character. I mean, I always say this has to be a national character that you're also using these things for the benefit of yourself right. and all. G. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar Prabhu, you uh, specifically raised about the issue that how different cities have different problems and hence, you know, we definitely need different kind of solutions. So what is it that you would like to uh, suggest? Uh, you know, you are an urban planner here on the show. What can really be done to decongest these cities? You've spoke about the problems that cities like Mumbai and Bengaluru are facing today. But what can be done, in your opinion, to solve them? No, no. First of all, we must understand why the city needs to be decongested. You know, the, the very concept is wrong. We have taken our concept of our cities by just copying the West. For instance, in the West, in American cities and other places, there is a downtown where there are high-rise high, high rise buildings where all the jobs are concentrated. And then you have the suburbs where people go and stay. Now, when you, when you try and replicate those kind of models and create a BKC on one side, create a district where the old mills were on the other side, and all jobs are concentrated from there. In the southern part of Mumbai, there are jobs. In Bangalore, you have 
some areas which are now touting to be the the main job centers and then from the places where people live they have to commute all the way so instead of having this major segregation of places which provide jobs and places which provide residences if the planning norms can be altered and changed to have jobs in the near vicinity of the residence you don't need to commute so much so people can stay in the vicinity and walk to their residence or take a cycle to their residence or at the most a small commute in a public transportation which doesn't take more than 10 minutes or uh, so to commute so if the place for work and place of residence place for education and place of residence place for entertainment and place of residence are all within a given uh, framework and the old model of self sufficient villages if the city can be divided into sectors right. with each sector being self sufficient so people don't have then to travel long distances and the congestion problem will automatically be solved that requires basic well that is one part study. that is one part something that mr shailesh sinha also highlighted but mr chandrashekar prabhu the question is that uh, you know what can be done immediately say for example to decongest these cities to you know reduce the traffic on the roads no to reduce the traffic on the road there are very very simplistic solutions which people people only think of or of, of high cost solutions like freeways like uh, you know huge flyovers my understanding of the more the flyovers the more you encourage vehicles to come into such areas where otherwise vehicles would not have been uh, taken and more creation of congestion lord mayor of london to had taken a lot of uh, initiative in ensuring that the central london gets decongested you require people to take strong decisions to discourage vehicles from coming in and to encourage public transport now it's a it's a joint so strategy so you believe that if we are talking about congestion today it is not because of bad planning it is actually because of people's habits that we are seeing so much of traffic on the road i roads. i do not i do not think it's people's habits at all the planners have failed in most of our cities we have tried to ape the west and taken all the wrongs from the west and when you know you are stuck now you want to blame the poor people and their habits please don't blame the people people are following okay shailesh sena i believe has a different point of view you have shailesh sena ha you blame the people because the my, urban my, planners my and the great designers and the administrators and the politicians have failed us they have given us bad quality planning okay. in our cities and but now but now you are saying do not construct flyovers also i'm sure not many people no, are no, going I'm to like saying, that suggestion of yours shelly sir a quick not, response then andy merchant i'm not i'm not saying do not construct flyovers see, 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 i see, have see, seen see, places see. where the uh, flyovers are not required and sir, are constructed sir, let shelly sinha now respond i'll come back to you sir one second let shelly sinha respond first yes See, see, see. It's not about you know uh, uh, disturbed planning by the urban planners. No, it's not like that. It's actually what I just uh, said. That it's it's uh, the large movement of tra I mean, India has become the fastest traffic aut automotive um, uh, developed country in the world. If if we know, I mean, more than one thousand vehicles are registered every day in, De in Delhi. Other cities have different numbers altogether. You know, the land is same. the land is same land i mean is a uh, road it's same but the number of vehicle is increasing day by day we are all seeing convenience we just need to understand it's i, I mean just um, um, uh, the expert said that 
the habits are not wrong. So no, basically, you also believe right. that I'm it's because people are coming out in their own vehicles. There are more vehicles on the roads today. That's the reason why the congestion is so bad. You don't think planning of these Absolutely. cities uh, had why, anything why to do with why what we are witnessing today, with the show. problem that it's we are facing today? Kind of point taken. Plan, planning of Mumbai. Okay. Planning okay. Of okay. Mumbai. Got your point. Plan. Andy Merchant, now Pla going by what your Mumbai survey and, has you know, found, uh, are there any solutions? Okay, got your yeah. point, Shailesh Sina. Andy Merchant, now going by what you found in your report, are there certain suggestions that yeah. you can give that, you know, uh, cities like Mumbai, Bengaluru, Pune and Delhi can really, uh, you know, implement so that we uh, have, we manage to decongest these cities? Yeah, I think, it, I think first of all, it's, I think everybody makes some really valid points and I think the first thing I would say is there isn't one single solution. There is no, there is no magic pill that's going to fix this. If you think about most major cities uh, in the world, and I'm sure India is no different, um, they were built at a time when traffic was much lower, people's movements were different, and the whole infrastructure of the country was different. So countries have adapted, cities have adapted. You talked earlier about expanding into new areas and the cities growing. And I think, you know, we just need to look at all of the information together. So adding extra roads isn't the answer because they will fill up. Um, you need to be able to balance all of this together. So it needs to look at the, the data and the data will really show exactly where the needs are and what the needs are. So by understanding where the traffic starts and where the traffic goes to, by understanding at what times and what days are most problematic or, or identifying the, um, the points in the city where congestion occurs, why does it occur? Is it something as simple as the the flow of traffic, do the traffic lights need to be adjusted? That could just be a really simple solution that changes the impact of one junction. But all, none of these things work in isolation. I think you've got to look at all of these together. Public transport, um, urban mobility, you know, bicycles, walking, uh, car share and car riding options, etc. So I, I think I would say from the data that we've got and, and, and how we how we look at it is there is no single answer. I think it's really that governments, cities, businesses have all got to work together and collaborate, you know, so that when um, when we need to look at the change of working habits and working times, you know, there's no point in every organization and every major employer in a city all making the same change at the same time, because all you do is shift congestion to another point in the day. Hmm. You know, it's got to be that cities work with the major employers and look at how adjustments, small adjustments to their working practices may help congestion. On the same time, you know, the encouragement for people to move away from cars and into other methods of transport will involve investment in infrastructure for public transport, for cycle paths, et cetera. And I think the final thing that we see a really big impact, um, and, and I think it's the same in India, is that if you are going to still have high volumes of cars, um, the impact that that has in emissions can also be can also be reduced through electric vehicles. And right. we really see that as a as a really big area of improvement um, that can really help cities maybe not reduce the congestion per se, but definitely reduce the impact that cars have on the city. That's very interesting. So I think uh, over the last 40 minutes, we've managed to get some interesting set of solutions that can be uh, implemented to decongest our cities. Of course, it's not impossible, but perhaps just the intent is what is required now that we have the problem uh, in front of us acknowledged as well. I appreciate all of you gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening. Heading into a short break.